on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and I have, and here comes Osa, I have uh, Miss Victoria here with me so she can um, ask any questions that you might have. If you are coming live on Facebook right this very second, it's likely you are watching the replay. If you don't see that little red, um, that little red button in the corner that says live, please put hashtag replay in the comments and tell me hello. So here comes our boy. Come on, boy. Over here where you're comfortable. Thank you, sir. So we are going to make an arrangement out of some flowers that we had left over from that large banquet the other day. I thought it would be fun to do a low compact arrangement in a wooden box. So I was on um, I was on Facebook Marketplace the other day, and a lady was selling a whole bunch of wooden boxes, and they even had the liners in it, and I thought, I'm going to purchase those, and we've actually had the opportunity to make a beautiful arrangement for um, a customer. Actually, I have not posted it, but I'll post it tomorrow. It was gorgeous, and it was in purples and pinks and whites. But I thought I would make an arrangement to take to Mama, and I would show you how to make just a low, lush arrangement in a wooden box. Um, so when you come on, tell me hello. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me where you're from. We, again, I said earlier, but we are live on both Facebook and YouTube, so Miss Victoria can read your comments. So y'all talk to me. Tell me all the things. Ask me some questions. So I'm starting out with a block of fresh floral foam. And the wonderful part about these boxes is they came with the liners, which makes floral design so much easier when your container has a liner. So I am going to take, this is one block of fresh floral foam that has been soaked in water. And I've dropped it down in this liner. Now I'm just going to take this tape. This is a waterproof tape. And I am just going to tape that foam right down into the liner. Everyone's saying hello. Hello, hello. I don't know if you can see, but Mr. Osa's up here designing today. Oh, they're all saying hello to Osa. <laughs> He's up here designing today. He hasn't been in our videos in a minute. So he just had to get on the table, of course. So this, um, just, this is just the liner with the fl fresh floral foam taped right in. I'm gonna just drop it right down into this container. Now you can add water into that reservoir um, so the flowers will last longer. Um, we are going to use lots of beautiful white blooms. Again, these were some flowers that were left over from um, the banquet the other night. The, um, we did it on Friday. We picked them up on Sunday. So they have age on them, <laughs> but we are going to use these blooms and I'm gonna send them to Mama. I just thought it would be fun to do a low lush arrangement. Um, so we are going to start out, some of the flowers that I have include, let's see what all we have. We have some mums, we have some carnations, we have some pretty lisianthus left. So I'm just going to kind of pull out all the flowers in this one and set the base to the side. Um, on YouTube, Lucinda is watching from Arizona and Miss Irene is watching from Holland. Hello, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Thank y'all for being here. Now this is one white hydrangea, I'm not gonna use it. And let me just say, it's because it's going, it's older, um, it's an older bloom and it's going in fresh floral foam, it's not gonna last for very long. So I'm just gonna toss it. And um, the reason I'm doing this is because I hate to throw away pretty flowers. <laughs> so I thought Mama would so enjoy these flowers, so that's the reason we're doing this. So I've got some pretty chrysanthemums, and some of them, their little heads are broken. So this is um, a chrysanthemum. Um, a cushion mum is what we call him. And we've got several blooms of him. These are some mini white carnations that are really pretty. White lisianthus. We're going to start out with our cushion moms, I think. Um, Kristen Weaver says, I'm loving the white on white that everyone has asked for lately, cakes and flowers. Isn't that funny, Kristen? But now a cake, white on white is beautiful. In my personal opinion, I think that's so pretty. I'm going to start out with these little cushion moms. So I'm going to take my floral knife. And actually, I'm going to use some snips. I'm going to take my little floral snips, and I'm going to cut that short 
and I'm just going to tuck him right down into this floral foam. And we're just gonna make a low lush arrangement. So we are just going to tuck these flowers really tight into this container. So I'm just taking my little floral snips and cutting those little blooms. These are called button mums. They're a little white button mum. And I'm not starting with greenery. I thought that we would see how lush we could do it and then add just touches of greenery throughout after we get all our flowers in. We've got a lot of flowers to work with, so it works out great. So again, I'm just taking those stems and I'm just cutting them short. And we're just nestling those right down into that floral foam. Um, Miss Janice Sloan says, yes, I'm getting you live. Please, everyone, thank you for your prayers. I was struggling to breathe all day. I have severe asthma. So thank you all again. It really helped. I began to feel better. And suddenly I wasn't struggling to breathe. God bless each of you, and I love you all. Oh, sweet Miss Janice. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Not been feeling good for a little while. So again, I'm just taking each of these little blooms and I'm just cutting them off short. Um, Manuel says, hi ladies, update, thriving in my new job. Much love to the whole team. I'm so glad, Manuel. I'm so glad you're happy. What a blessing. Now you can really make an arrangement like this with any flowers. You can do it with flowers that you have in the garden. You can do it with, um, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So these are little cremones. It's a little white mum with a just a little blush of green. It almost just has, it's almost as if it was just sprayed almost like you put blush on your cheeks. Just a little <laughs> smear of green tucked in. So I'm going to take those and tuck those deep. Um, Miss Dorothy says, Hi, Monty. So nice to catch you live. I love to watch you work. Your arrangements are always spectacular. Sending you warm wishes from my home in Stamford, Vermont. So glad you're here, friend. I'm so glad you're here. So I'm just taking those mums and cutting those short. Um, Joe Bathurst says, isn't it nice to be able to make arrangements with the leftovers for loved ones? Isn't that fun? Absolutely. And I'm one of those that I just hate to throw them away. <laughs> it's no fun to throw them away. So these are standard carnations. Now the one thing I think is really fun about a carnation is you can take him and you can just fluff it. So let me say this though, when you do this to a carnation, you can only do it to a carnation. Please don't fluff anything else. <laughs> only fluff a carnation. But you're just gonna take him and you're gonna hold him really loosely in your hand, okay? And you're just going to fluff those petals. Um, but if you try to do that with any other flower, you are going to bruise those petals. So always be careful. See how pretty those white carnations are? And they smell so pretty. Um, Miss Linda Wurstuck says, Hi, yay, love watching your videos. It's a very pretty sunny day in Las Vegas. Yay! Um, so nice when it's pretty out, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So glad you're here. Thank you for watching. Peaceful Heart Crafts says, hello from Leslie at Peaceful Heart Crafts way up in British Columbia, Canada. Wow. So glad to have caught you live. Yay, so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Got my nose itching. Rhea Norman says, she and her husband Mark had just got back from watching the National Theater live at the cinema. Ooh, that sounds wonderful, Rhea. That was a nice date with your honey. Um, Charles asks what you're making today, and Miss Catherine asks, who, what is this for? So this is just leftover flowers that we had from um, a dinner party the other night. We did all of those really large arrangements, and so we brought them all back, and we pulled all the flowers out and just dropped them in water. And I thought, let's make a really lush arrangement in a wooden box. So I bought... I think I bought 25 of these wooden boxes and they were different shapes and different sizes, but they were all wooden boxes. I bought those on Marketplace on Facebook. And so I thought it would be fun to reuse some of our blooms and send mama some flowers because she always enjoys her flowers. 
And so that's why we are just going to repurpose these pretty blooms. I'm going to use all the longer lasting stems. I decided not to use the hydrangeas just because they're not gonna be very happy in this floral foam, especially since they're already older. So I'm taking, these are just a um, cushion mum. It is just a, you can see it has lots of petals. So a cushion mum um, has just a lot more petals than like a daisy mum, and it doesn't have that prominent center that a daisy has. Um, but I really like them because they really fill up a lot of space. So we like to use them, especially when you're doing a really solid container or a solid arrangement and it needs to be just all flowers like a heart or a cross cushion mums are the perfect variety of mums for that um, miss mary lou says what no foliage Bonnie? well it's gonna have foliage. <laughs> no worries you know i can't do without foliage there's another carnation um joe bather says thank you for your fantastic tutorials i did my first mini wedding for a friend your tutorials gave me the confidence to make Yay. my first corsages and a small bridal bouquet how wonderful was that i am so thankful you did that i bet it was beautiful all right let's see what else we got over here we got some more carnations so i'm gonna pull some carnations out Joan High asks, how is your dear mother doing? And I think Miss Frankie's watching your Is Mama on there? Line. Hey, mm -hmm. Mama. Mama's doing wonderful. She is back in church um, and going back to Sunday school. She's feeling really good. Um, she's feeling great. She's got the best attitude, though. She really is so positive and mm -hmm. happy. Um, Miss Ann Seacrest asks if the cell phone outage affected us. Um, we had a, a few problems yesterday morning um, just from, we just couldn't get calls into the flower shop yesterday morning. Sir, they can't see with you right there. My phone was... Was, was yours um, acting up mm -hmm. really bad? I heard that. It, my mom told me it was like AT&T had an outage. Really? So, um, my phone just said SOS at the top. Ooh. I was so confused. So I'm just taking these carnations and I'm just tucking them really deep down into this arrangement. So everything's really deep, really lush. Mr. Kate Park right in front of the <laughs> arrangement. Um, He's like, these Sue? people want to see me. <laughs> um, Sue Matthias says, I'm so happy that I have joined a flower friendly small group and watching you inspired me. I'm 74. Aww. Never too old, I guess. Never <laughs> too old. You are exactly right. You are never too old to do something that makes you happy. And flowers certainly do a great job of making people happy. So I'm just taking these. These are just those regular white carnations. And I am just tucking them really deep down into this floral foam. And you can see how lush and full it's getting. Um, Miss Cheryl from Michigan says she's excited she got us live. Hello, Miss Cheryl. Um, she says hello. She hopes we're doing well. She says it'll be nice to take the flowers to your sweet mama. It's nice that she can enjoy them even if you can't sell them. I wish I was her and could enjoy your leftovers. Well, I wish you were here. We'd be happy to deliver you some leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate to throw them away. It hurts my feelings. Victoria um, took, I know, I guess it was Callie took some home yesterday. And Victoria took some flowers home to her grandmother. She took flowers over to her grandmama. And you took some to your mama too, didn't you? Um, I brought home some Valentine's leftovers. Yes, we had a few arrangements left from Valentine's Day. So um, Victoria took some to her sweet mama. So I'm just taking those carnations and I'm just kind of fluffing them a little bit. And you can see it's just getting fuller and fuller of just white blooms. Let's see. Okay, next what we're gonna do is add some mini carnations. So a carnation um, comes in, there's a standard size. Let me pull him. 
which is big, and then there's a mini carnation, which is small. Now there is a way, back in the 80s, we would do a, and I say we, I was not making flowers in the 80s. Um, <laughs> I was not old enough to be making flowers in the 80s, but they would make corsages out of carnations. And often when you made a corsage, you really wanted to use a mini, cor a mini, a mini carnation. You wanted to use the smaller buds instead of a standard. But I'm going to show you a trick on how to split a standard carnation if in case you need to make some small ones. And then we'll get back to this arrangement. But what you do with a carnation is it's got a calyx. See that green calyx on that flower? And you're going to take it and you're going to cut that stem right off. So you just cut it flush with the calyx. And you're going to take your snips and you're going to cut that flower right in half. And then you're going to pull those petals apart and you have two different buds, okay? So what you're going to do is take a little wire, and maybe I have some wire in here. You're going to take a little florist wire. I may have to go in there and get one. Here's some. And I am going to take that and I'm going to wrap that wire right around that bud. Now I realize we don't do this as much as we did back in the day, but every once in a while you'll get in a pinch. So what I did was I just wrapped that calyx with that wire. And then you'll take florist tape, and you can make this bud smaller if you need to, um, but I'm just taking that florist tape and I'm taping it right around that wire. Now this is bigger than a, a little mini carn, but see how much smaller it is from a standard. Let me pull a standard out. But it's an easy way just to split a carnation. Now you can take some of those petals and remove them and make it smaller if you need to. But you're just going to gather it tighter. Just like that. Take that wire and wrap it right around. You don't use carnations a whole lot and so I've never taught that before. But see how that's one little bloom and you just take your tape and you can tape it. Now this is a small enough bloom that you could use it as a boutonniere, you could use it in a corsage, but you just wire and tape it, add a little bit of greenery and it would work as a little boutonniere for your lapel. Just a fun little note. Um, Miss Kathy John. I can't find her comment now, but I think she said something like um, she really loves our show. She oh, misses doing you, her arrangements. Um, Miss Deborah says we are having a women's banquet at church. The theme is loved by God or loved, loved my God, loved by God. Um, what flower do you think best symbolizes love? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> they're all made by God. I don't think that you could mess up. Um, I think a lot of people think um, a rose, a red rose symbolizes love. Um, I think you should sit down and talk to the ladies and figure out exactly what color scheme to go with that. Um, usually red, red anything is associated with love. So I might think to use a red flower. Um, and the red flowers would include carnations, and roses, Gerbera daisies. Um, but I would probably say stick with a red flower. Um, Joe says, my cat sits on the unit, looks at me and tries to chew my flowers. I will say, I was actually speaking to a lady today, ours does not meddle, except when I say he, he never meddles with anything. <laughs> and he'll have his head right over here in this flower arrangement. But, so what I just stuck in was just some little white mini carnations. Now the wonderful part about all the flowers that I'm using in this container is every one of them are extremely long lasting. We're using carnations and chrysanthemums um, and every single bloom is extremely long lasting. 
Um, Sweetbriar says I'm hunkered down in my recliner blanket and taking care of my hand surgery. Bless your heart. I am so sorry you had to go through that. But I know you'll be so glad when it's over. <laughs> Earlier, I, I'm a little behind on comments. Earlier, Miss Margaret Lynch said, Monty, Osa said, push over. <laughs> no, scoot over. I'm all in his way, wasn't I? Bless it. He's so bossy. So I'm just taking these little carnations. And you can see all I've done is just mound these flowers. There's nothing fancy about it. I'm just taking them and just at, just mounded them over, just making sure I'm covering up all of my floral foam. So this is white lisianthus, some buds and blooms that are still left. And I'm going to take those and I'm just going to kind of stick them out because to me they're so pretty. Um, Alma Hooper says, hello, beautiful ladies. First time I've got you live in a long time. Yay! The flowers are beautiful. So glad you're here, friend. Thank you for watching. They're, they loved seeing us. Oh, no, he's so funny. Um, your mama says, I went to the doctor today, and he said, keep on doing what I was doing. I've gained two pounds. Good, mama. So mama has always worried about her weight, and so she can be too little, which her daughter never has that problem, this one. The other daughter is always thin, too. But this one never has a problem being too thin. Anyway, Mama has, um, <laughs> Mama's always worried about gaining weight. Well, when she went through cancer, she worried about being too thin. I mean, she got to where she was too thin. So she's gaining weight. So that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Because I'm always like, you need to gain some weight. And she's always like, you need to lose some. <laughs> Picking on me. Um, Joe says, I have made a few small bunches and left my business card in a please take me home label. I leave them around the village. It's a great way to be Fantastic. known. And most people post a picture and thank you on social media. That's wonderful. Years ago, we haven't done it in years. I bet we haven't done it since COVID. We would play a game when it was still pretty. I mean, when it was cooler out um, the lost bouquet and it was basically exactly that um, but what we would do is we would make four or so small arrangements just like you just said and we would put a note on the bouquet and and say we were a lost bouquet please take me home and enjoy me or give it away um, and we would ask so but what we would do is we would have them we would give hints so they could go all over town and find them. And they had to tell us when they found one. And that was so much fun. So it was like a scavenger hunt. But that's fantastic. What a wonderful way to use your flowers as advertisement. Rhea Norman says, I'd love to send your mama one of my afternoon teas. Oh, I know she would enjoy that, Rhea. Um, Gray asks, what is this for? This is for fun, Gray. These were leftover flowers from the banquet the other night, and we just brought them home and put them in the cooler, and so we were trying to clean out and put away all the things, and we had put these all in a vase, actually in several vases, and we just decided that we would make a pretty arrangement, and I'm going to take it out to my mama. Um, Peggy Livingston says, my green floral tape does not want to stick too good. It gets frustrating sometimes. I love carnations. In the 60s, I wore corsages with roses and carnations for banquets, etc. Yes, weren't they wonderful? We actually, um, in a few months, a month or so, we have to make 83 <laughs> um, mini carnation corsages. And then I can't remember the number of boutonnieres, but a lot of them. So I'm just taking this Lysianthus. I'm leaving it a little long and kind of sticking it out of this foam. Dawn Miller says hello. Hey, Miss Dawn Miller. How are you? Um, Kelly Schaefer says, been watching your flower arranging for a couple weeks now. Love watching. Your arrangements are beautiful. Um, and she's watching from Oroville, California. Wow, thank you so much for being here. I'm so thankful you're here. Donna Side says, so excited I got my devotional today. Looking forward Yay. to going through this devotional with you. Oh, I'm so glad. I actually sat down and read it this morning. It's a little longer than we're used to, but I don't think it'll take too long. But I'm excited. Um, Lisa Turkhurst is always, I've done several of her Bible studies, and she's always been wonderful. 
All right, so that's got a lot of flowers in it. I'm seeing a hole here. So I'm just kind of spinning around this container and I'm kind of looking underneath the edge. I do have some pretty greenery that we'll add, but you don't want any of that foam to show. Okay, so there, it's really lush and really pretty. Now, if you wanted to stop here, you absolutely could, but I do have a little bit of foliage and I thought we would add some greenery just around the edge of that container. So this is Israeli Ruscus, and I'm actually going to cut it into smaller pieces. And I'm going to just cut, tuck it kind of right down around that container. Well, um, talking about the roses, are red roses being the most popular symbol of love. Yes. Um, Latrell Starling says red represents the blood of Jesus. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, and then talking about your little carnation tip or trick, um, uh -huh. Mike Shore says, I used to take a spray rose and insert um, in the center of a standard carnation for corsages and boutonnieres. Never would have ever thought of that. I'll have to try that. Um, and Miss Betty says, back in the day we sure did that. Plus we used gladiolus florets, stacked them, and made corsages and bristlets. Yes, and I have never done that either. I have never used a glad. But I tell you, we don't get glads as often, I don't think. Um, you know, used to, you saw glads in all of the flowers. Um, especially funeral work, you saw lots of gladiolus. And gladiolus, we just don't get as often, and they're expensive. I don't know if you've bought glads from a wholesaler in a while, but they, they are fairly expensive, so we don't get them very often. Um, sometimes in the summertime we'll get them, but not very often do we get gladiolus. So I'm just taking this Israeli Ruscus and I'm cutting it kind of short. I'm just using my um, floral snips and I'm just cutting it into small little pieces, just like that, and just tucking it all the way around. So I wanted to take pictures at that um, luncheon that we had today, but they didn't have the tablecloths on the tables. So Victoria and I just delivered the flowers and left them. It hurt my feelings mm -hmm. that we couldn't take pictures of the pretty tables. But I did do a video of me making the other two um, arrangements, so I will edit that video. It's just gonna be a little real. Okay, so I've kind of gone all the way around the base with that Israeli Ruscus. And then I have just a small sprig of some eucalyptus, so I thought that I would cut it into small pieces and nestle it in. I know y'all thought something was wrong if Monty wasn't using greenery, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Allison says, wow, 83 corsages, what are they for? <laughs> they are for um, a youth banquet, and they wanted all the girls and all the boys to have a corsage. And so, yeah, that's going to be a lot. <laughs> that's going to be a lot. Um, Miss Janice Sloan asks if you've ever thought of taking your leftovers to the activity department of a nursing home. She says, I used to volunteer for several guests at the nursing home, and some of the floral shops would bring us their leftovers. I They're need greatly to appreciated. do that. Yes, I certainly need to do that. And we have done that in the past. Um, I just haven't even thought about that with these flowers. I don't have a whole lot of stems left. I did send some with Callie and that kind of thing. Um, but that's a wonderful idea. Thank you, thank you for putting that back in my head. I appreciate that. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, Carl says, better to toss them and, s or, hold on, let me find the comment. Um, better to reuse them than toss them when they are still pretty. Well, and the only thing is, is that you don't want to resell them because their quality is not as good. You know, that some of the life is gone. Um, but if you can give them away to someone who can enjoy it for, for a little while, that's always a blessing, I think. Sorry. On Did we go dark again? Mm -hmm. That silly camera. We need a new camera. Um, Joanne says, that looks like a lovely window box you would have outside your window. Yes, isn't it pretty? 
I think these little wooden boxes are fun to work with. We made the prettiest one for today. And I really should have done it on a video. Um, but it's basically exactly what I just did. This is exactly what it looked like, except it was in pinks and lavenders and whites. And it was beautiful. Um, but it looked ex it was in a square box instead of the, um, the rectangle. But it was so, so pretty. So this is basically, um, the lady who came in actually showed us a hat box. We don't carry hat boxes, like the cardboard hat boxes that you can put a liner in. We don't carry those, um, but I showed her the wooden boxes and so she said, yes, that's absolutely what I want. So it worked out perfect. But it looked j basically just like this and we made it just exactly like we just made this one. Very easy. Um, you just keep adding flowers until it's as full as you want it. Um, Sharon Flowers Armstrong says, your mama is so blessed to get this arrangement. <laughs> I think she'll enjoy it. Mama always takes really good care of her flowers. <laughs> It'll probably last longer than you'd ever expect it to. Um, Kara or Kara on YouTube says, Hi, I have an interview tomorrow for a floral designer position. Any tips? Yay! Um, I d what would you say, Victoria? What are some tips? Oh, gee. Jason, let me ask you. Come and answer this question. Um, she has an interview tomorrow as a floral designer at a shop. Do we have any tips for her to help her with her interview? That's a hard one, right? <laughs> I think a lot of it is go in there and be yourself. Be yourself yeah, sure. is really important and um, go in there and tell them you're willing to learn. Um, do not go in with a mindset no, that... Go in and be yourself, no matter what it is. Well, I know. If it's yours, it's But me. when you're designing, but don't have a mindset that you're stuck on how you do things. Always be willing to learn. And so if they give you pointers, um, try not to get your feelings hurt is really, really the main thing. I think that was hard for me because when I first went into a flower shop, of course, I didn't know a whole lot, but I had to listen and be willing to take pointers. But go in and be yourself. Be happy and willing to answer any questions they might have. Um, and it's really going to be, I mean... That's, not, that's impossible. <laughs> that's a hard one. <laughs> that's a hard question. But yeah, just go in there and be yourself and be happy and, and be willing to learn um, and willing to change if you have any arranging skills that, that don't work with theirs. Um, just be willing just to be kind of... Matching personalities and stuff is what we look for first before anything else. So being yourself is important. I don't know if they heard you. Well, you can repeat. <laughs> oh, I can? <laughs> personalities and how personalities work are really important in floral design. And the reason I say that is whether we all kind of mesh together, because we're here a lot together. I mean, you're with those people more than you are with your family um, when it comes to work. And so that's what we look for first. And then we look for someone willing to learn and willing to adjust. Um, because there are certain things that I really like about how we specifically do things. Um, and so as long as you're willing to, um, to what, adjust with how we do things, it usually yeah. works out pretty good. What would yeah. you say? I think, um, and it's not like reiterating to not get your feelings hurt because I think each, or as far as you've told me, each force may do something slightly different. And so it's not a, you're necess it's not necessarily that you're doing it wrong. It just right. may not be Absolutely. how they do it. And the way you tie a bow might not be the way they tie bows. And you might tie them larger or you might tie them smaller. And just be willing to go with the flow and learn how they do things. Um, and it'll all work out. You know, and sometimes you just don't jive, and that's okay too. Um, just move on. Um, but you got this. 
<laughs> just go in there and be yourself. She says, um, she says, thank you. I hope they give me grace on my arrangement designs. I'm a little rusty, LOL. Well, and I tell you, you'll get it. It just takes mm -hmm. a little time. And I'll be honest, for me personally, I'd rather someone come in here and not know anything about floral design as to have someone come in and know they think they know everything and I have my style and them not being willing to be a little, um, what is it? I mean, willing to change things a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, because I can remember early on as a boss, I had a hard time saying you're not doing this right or you're not doing it the way I would prefer it done. And then I would get the arrangement and go change it so that it could go out on delivery. Well, I wasn't helping her and she wasn't helping me. And so I had to learn to not, I don't go um, to the designer and, and sound gruff. I always try to teach her what I would like for it to look like um, and try to be kind and soft and gentle when I explain it. Um, and it was like with Victoria, you know, there were, or, or even we were working with Maggie today. Um, everything that Maggie does tends to be shorter and more compact. And that we were doing, she was doing roses and I said, hey, let me show you one thing. She wanted to cut the roses a little shorter. And I said, it's beautiful. You're doing a beautiful job, but let me show you this. And I showed her how to insert those roses where they weren't all just kind of compact down in the arrangement. They were kind of flared out a little more. And then I explained to her to leave those stems a little bit longer um, that they paid for all of the stem length. And Maggie's so laid back and easy to, she's easy to teach and coach. And that's what you need to be, easy to teach and easy to coach. Um, because we're not always going to do it the same. I mean, we're all very different. But as an artist, you're going to find that you'll get your feelings hurt. So don't get your feelings hurt. She's, they're not there to hurt your feelings. Um, so try not to get your feelings hurt, but it, it's easy to get your feelings hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. As an artist, you just, we just think mm -hmm. we just, this is my art. <laughs> yeah, and it's, fr and, it, and it can be frustrating, you, or at least I remember when I first started and I was learning, there was like a couple weeks where I felt like I was getting so frustrated with myself because why could I not get this how you wanted it? But like, if you can push through that level, uh, that, that moment of like that frustration of just, I don't know. For me, once I was able to get through that, and the more I practiced, it came so e so much. Well, and let easily, me just say, Victoria, easier. you you are a, a fantastic designer. Yeah, well, fine. And <laughs> and once we got Victoria is is an overthinker, but Victoria came in as a different type of artist. I'm an artist with flowers. Victoria's a fine artist, meaning painting and. Um, drawing and that type of art and so in that type of medium with paint and with pencil and pen you have to be more of a perfectionist and in this type of art well all these flowers have minds of their own <laughs> so you couldn't be a perfectionist it's not going to be perfect and Victoria's like but it needs to be yeah. perfect <laughs> you know and so that was a little hard getting her through that step once we got her through that there was no problem. But really, it's all about just be willing to be laid back enough and don't get your feelings hurt because you can in an art. And that's what this is. This is a, an art form. And you can get your feelings hurt. Um, she says, I appreciate it. Larry says, I love all the all the white flowers. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, Linda Jester asks if you ordered these boxes. I did not order these boxes. These boxes I bought off of, um, I think it was Startful Buy, Sell, and Trade. So it was on Facebook, and it was just a group where you could post things that you had for sale. Um, and a lady posted them. She had these at her daughter's wedding, and she had 25 of them, and she posted them for sale. And so I said, I'd like to purchase those. And so I went and bought those from her. But they came in squares and then the rectangles so that they're just a little window box. And they're, they actually came with all the liners, so they're fantastic. Um, oh, you, a few people have asked where Osa is. Osa just went that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was in here on the table earlier, and he just went that way. <laughs> um, He's probably on the, in the chair in the window. He loves mm -hmm. the chair in the window. Miss mm -hmm. Debbie asks if you can do a Western flower arrangement. 
Miss Debbie, I did one, and it's been several, I guess it's been a couple summers back, where I used cowboy boots. I'll try to pull that one up for you. Um, it was kind of fun, where I used a vase and tucked it down in, and we did the arrangement coming out of a cowboy boot. And then I've also done it in work boots, where we took um, an arrangement and made an arrangement in work boots. I think he was retiring, so we used his boots to to make a pretty arrangement. But I'll try to pull up that one with the cowboy boots. It's cute. Linda Jester says, so beautiful as always, still waiting to see Callie on a video. I know, we actually just talked about that today. <laughs> Callie says, I guess I gotta do a video for these people. <laughs> <laughs> She's so quiet though. I don't know how much talking we will get Callie to do. I'll probably have to do the commentary for it. <laughs> She's so timid and quiet. Peggy Livingston says, I am 75 and still willing to learn, and I do floral. Customer service goes a long way, and team effort, and ask questions if you don't know. It is fun. It is. It is. And I tell you, there are going to be times when you have customers that you do not get their vision. Sometimes I can't see it. Sometimes I can't understand it if they're trying to describe it. And we're all going to have those types of issues. And sometimes I'm just not the designer for some people. <laughs> you know, there's just some people I cannot please. And so it is hard. It's hard to see the customer's vision. But, um, but we all work together and it makes it work. Kristen Weaver says, in tiny rain boots. In ti I in did do boots. some in little tiny rain boots for our boy, <laughs> our sweet boy. Uh, Miss Debbie asks if you've done one in a cowboy hat. I don't think I've ever done one actually an arrangement in a cowboy hat. Now, I have done a casket piece with a cowboy hat in the casket piece before. Um, but I have n And I've done rope. We did rope. We did a wreath. At Christmas time, with um, rope from, I think they would rodeo and and rope the cattle, and um, so we did a rope wreath. But I don't think I've ever actually made an arrangement in a cowboy hat. Um, on YouTube, Charlene Smith. Charlene Smith says, Hi, I love watching you do your magic. Have you done oh. a wedding with boho and pompous grass? Yes, actually a couple. I'll pull that for you. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I'll have to figure out what the name of it is. Um, I did one, it was a year ago in September. And we actually did the pompous and the, all the flowers on a... Um, on a hay ring out in the middle of a pasture. Um, and it was beautiful. And it had all of the pompous grass and all. It was maroons and blues and greens. It was really, really pretty. Yep. Um, Kristen Weaver says, sometimes I'm completely booked for certain requests. Absolutely, Kristen. <laughs> yes. Sometimes they're just, sometimes, yes. <laughs> it's just better to leave it at that. <laughs> Um, Miss Peggy says you do a great job. I enjoyed meeting you at your shop. Everything is beautiful. Thank you so much, friend. Thank you, thank you. And we love it when people come to visit. Thank you for coming to see us. Um, Judy Roder, which is, I was also thinking of this one. She said you did one with a cow school. I did, time. yes. And it was with, um, that had all of the, actually I did two. Um, we did one oh, that was, it, did we get dark again? The battery. It, is it out? It's dead again. YouTube. They can still hear you. How annoying is that? Guys on YouTube, thank y'all for being here. Thank you, thank you. Um, we will be back tomorrow. If you are interested over on YouTube, come back to Facebook and join us tomorrow for our, we'll do a devotion at 8 in the morning. And in the 3 o'clock hour, we will make another pretty flower arrangement. So we'd love to have you join us. Did we go? We came in and out. 